Is there a second rut? We asked Jeff Sturgis, John Eberhardt, and Dan Johnson what their opinion is on the second rut and how it could be a great time to shoot a big buck. Let us know in the comments below when the second rut is typically occurring, where you hunt and where that is. Here we go. In your opinion, is there a second rut or do you think that it's just post rut or what's your thoughts on that? Oh yeah, there's definitely a second rut. There's definitely those that don't get bred during the first rut that, you know, the first rut that come into heat again. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's definitely early dolphins uh, the, you know, born early that come into estrus, they have their first estrus cycle that year. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's even in January. Mm -hmm. So what's your strategy with that? So let's say, let's say for instance, you go to Kansas, you don't shoot your buck on your 10 day trip and you still have that tag or even Iowa, it's a little bit harder tag to draw. Are you going back to try to hunt the second rut at any point or no? No, usually by December, I, my job gets so busy that mm -hmm. I, I just, I just can't. As what about sale, now that you're retiring? Yeah, not yeah. Now that I'm retiring, I definitely will. I, I think there's an excellent chance I'll be going to Ohio mm -hmm. uh, during December or some other state during December. Thinking about Oklahoma, actually. Interesting. Oklahoma yeah. seems to be an up and coming state for a variety of reasons. We did some whitetail cribs there as well, and it seemed like pretty pretty strong uh, population of nice bucks. Oh, they're out. Oh, I mean. It, Hello, clearly orders Kansas for God's sakes. Yeah, do the math. Get up yeah. in the northern panhandle of Oklahoma. It's awesome. Dan, in your opinion, uh, what do you what do you think about the second rut? Is there a second rut? Is there one rut? What's what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. So really, what it comes down to is when when deer are bred or the pregnancy doesn't take right. So a deer will go into a second estrus period after the first estrus period or however many days past the first uh, estrus period. And so do I think there's a second rut? Yes. I, I kind of look at everything as a breeding season and that bell curve that we've all seen, you know, the uh, National Deer Association post, and that is even as early as October, early October, you can start seeing breeding happening all the way back into January, even in, uh, and I'm just using the Midwest as an example. So do I believe there could be a second observed rut? Absolutely. If uh, maybe a doe or two don't get bred in that first breeding period. Um, have you ever documented anything like that based off of like fawn dropping dates on your trail cameras? Like where those, where that breeding is happening later in the season? You know, I wish I could pull it up. I wish I knew what year it was, but yes, I've had, uh, I've had fawns as early as March on my trail cameras. Wow. And, and then I've also had fawns as late with spots, like very small deer as late as mid to late July. So, I mean, but that's, but you're talking over a, I don't know, 15 year period of running trail cameras. There's just a couple couple outliers, but for the most part, they're all in that same, they're all in that same time frame. Yeah, that's that's some good insight. I, that's one of the things I think um people forget to tie those clues together. When you start seeing trends of fawns dropping late or dropping early, you can you know follow that gestation period of I don't know, 200 days plus or minus a few days, yeah, and kind of get that yeah. con, con, that conception date, which is good insight around the just general property, general, general deer knowledge. I love the second rut. If you just go from about your peak rut period around that lockdown where a lot of does were coming in or early November around here, you go to end of November, early December, and you can have an, it's a, to me, the most missed time of opportunity in the deer hunting woods. Um, it's, it's shorter, smaller, might be 20% of the rot, 25% of does being bred, 15%. But you have to watch how the state agencies report the rot because some figure in the second rot as part of the primary rot. Um, some look at it separately. Some collect fetuses, some don't. I mean, they, they collect it all different ways. So um, you can even look at Georgia, look at a running map for Georgia. They do it by counties. Regions are different. And in the state line from Georgia, Georgia to Alabama or Florida is just like completely the state line doesn't dictate when does come in. They say this one's saying two weeks earlier than this one. It's just a state line or a county line. So in the reason for that is every state agency collects the rut data different. Yeah. So let's say someone, they strike out the pre-rut, they strike out during the peak of the rut, and now they're trying to hunt that second rut what does your second rut hunting strategy kind of look like? That's where I, I flip back into morning hunting again. Um, I hunt the same areas that I hunted um, in the pre-rut, peak rut, where I'm getting near bedding areas in the morning, and then I'm hitting food sources in the afternoon, evening. 
And so I, and, and what's different that time of year, the food sources are becoming consolidated. They're either overpressured. So deer don't hit them during the daylight or they're just non-existent. You know, around here, our alfalfa and hay, which is everywhere around here. After that first frost in October, it turns yellow and stormy. It's not a food source. Um, the corn around here in about a three to four week period from early October to early November gets chopped. Then it gets picked. Then it gets manure. And then it gets chisel plow. And all of a sudden there's what was corn is just gone. And so by the time you get into um, early uh, December, late November, there's not a lot of food sources left in the ones, some of them are even overpressured. So really those food sources dictate so much. So you can find bedding areas and you might need to change your tactics, change your land, change the public land that you hunt on, change the private land that you hunt on to get to find those food sources because deer, deer will be herded up and mm-hmm. uh, really concentrated. And that can be incredible at that time of year. Assuming let's say, for some of the country, Thanksgiving is the second rut, or maybe the maybe maybe just the tail end of actually the, the main rut. What's your opinion on that? What was that now? Uh, so, like, what would you categorize uh, Thanksgiving time? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, down in Kansas, even into Kentucky, West Virginia, maybe even Southern Ohio, Southern Indiana, Southern Illinois, that Thanksgiving time would really be winding down. Uh, but there's still running activity here. There's almost no running activity. And it's not to say there's not a random doe coming in. There's not running activity at all. It's just really, really shut down. Um, Mm -hmm. very much so. I mean, that's like where I hunt in Pennsylvania, um, which is Bradford, Northern Pennsylvania. What's nice is when we always had that Monday opener after Thanksgiving, that was right about during that second rut. Uh, so we got to see some running behavior during the rut then, but Thanksgiving is either done not to say there's not some does here and there in areas like uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, New York, Pennsylvania, um, or it's just about to be done in some of the more southerly areas before you go so far south that it becomes it's a random, you know, random opportunity. Mm-hmm. Okay. What can that happen makes- anytime based on does. 